Hello, everybody. For first updates now, I'm Tyler Olds, and you're watching Behind the Bumpers. It's a fun show where we dive deeper in the robots and what makes them work in FRC. And today I'm here with team number 1038 Lakota Robotics coming out of Liberty Township, Ohio. 1038 dates their debut back to 2003, where they have two regional wins, five finalist awards, and two engineering inspiration awards. And uh, last year, they were able to play at the Miami Valley Regional, where they took home the Imagery Award and also had one of their mentors, Jimmy, honored with the Woody Flowers Finalist Award. Uh, we're going to be looking at their modified 2020 robot here. And today we have both Courtney and Drew. And we're going to be diving deeper into what they modified, uh, some of their amazing aesthetics that they have uh, going through the full power cell journey, all here on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker is a leading medical device company and is looking for those in first to join their team as interns or for a great career. Come join a company that will actively support you being in first at careers.stryker.com. If you're on an FRC or FTC team and you're currently meeting safely in person and have a functional robot, we'd love to have you on our Behind the Bots or Behind the Bumper segments. Go ahead and reach out to us on any of our social channels, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com and let's get your team scheduled to be on First Updates Now. So Courtney, we're gonna be uh, diving into this robot starting with your intake. So I'd love to hear about some of the design of it uh, and then any modifications that you may have made uh, and lessons learned from the 2020 season going into 2021. Yeah, um, so our intake here is uh, built with lots of mechanical wheels, uh, mechanical wheels, four bars of them to be exact. Um, they're 3D printed so that we can get the specific colors and sizes that we needed. Um, and they're run off of a um, motor here um, and the entire thing is actuated on two pneumatic cylinders so that it can be raised up into the robot when the match starts um, and then come down over the bumper to acquire once the match begins. Um, the, throughout the 2020 season, um, we actually went through multiple different iterations of this arm profile here to make sure that we stayed within the dimension parameters and to make sure that we could actually acquire the balls effectively. Um, so I believe these are fourth or fifth iteration um, water jet cut parts. Um, and this design is also good because it allows us to acquire balls along the entire front frame of our robot. Um, so we don't have a narrow acquisition um, area. Can we see uh, a power cell intake through there? And uh, we'll ask a couple of follow-up questions as we go through, but let's see uh, a power cell actually coming into the robot. <laughs> Oh, that's really interesting. So, uh, I mean, two comments to make. By the way, you might be the team that takes the award for most mechanic wheels on a robot ever. Uh, so, which is really <laughs> interesting. Um, I do have a question, though. So, um, so we saw the uh, power cell come in and then move over. And then you have some Omni wheels that are more on the uh, right-hand side of the robot there. Uh, why have the Omni wheels there versus the vector and intake or mechanic wheels on the, the rest of the intake? Um, because our storage system starts on the right side of our robot facing the front of it. Um, so the mechanical wheels actually direct the ball um, over to this side here, and then the Omni wheels direct it back up and into storage. Um, that way we're not trying to force the ball into the part of our robot over here where it wouldn't actually be intaked properly. Um, and we can still collect it and put it into storage where we need it. So we're going to be going over the Drew next, who's going to be talking about uh, your hopper mechanism uh, and how that works and from that transfer uh, from the intake into your hopper. And I know you got a couple sensors you're using as well too, Drew. So tell us a little bit more about that and any lessons learned from the 2020 season into 2021. Yeah, okay. So uh, yes, the sensors that we are using here, we have a we have two lasers that can detect whether there's a ball in front of them, one right here to tell if we're acquiring one, and one right in front of the turret to tell us whether we are already at the end, basically to stop us from accidentally pushing them up into the shooter. Uh, we we tried a couple different um, sensors there. We tried uh, proxies and uh, proxies and some infrared sensors, uh, but we ended up just going with these as they were the most reliable. Um, so basically, our storage system, as you can see, there's this uh, 90 degree turn, which was a little bit complicated, but we were able to figure that out with some of these, uh, well, th these belts over here um, that uh, basically 
bring it from one to the next, we have this tubing and this piece of plastic here to stop uh, the balls from being cut. Um, basically, so this season we have uh, honestly not changed a lot about storage. It functioned really effectively at MVR last year. So uh, right afterwards, we upped the storage speed and then we didn't get to end up using that for our second competition last year. But that's what we were able to bring into this season was just that kind of increased speed and efficiency through getting our balls from intake out to the shooter. Um, so, so a couple of questions I want to ask as a follow up on this. I, I definitely want to see that ball come in because I, I don't know if I've seen that. Uh, definitely not very frequently to have a full 90 degree turn like that. Uh, but uh, the sensors that you're using on there, are they uh, primarily just used to count how many balls coming in or do they actually create like a distance or a gap between the power cells uh, so they don't rub into each other? Like what is the specific feedback and function you're getting on those sensors? So they all they do is say whether there's a ball in front of them or not. And we use that to make sure that our balls get evenly spaced to not jam on this turn, which was a problem for us early on. And also to make sure that we don't accidentally uh, feed the ball too close to this flywheel, which would stop us from being able to get up to speed. Sure, and we'll be showing the shooter next. Can we see that, can we see that power cell going through uh, and seeing that turn in particular? I really wanna see how it makes that turn on there. Well, very efficient on there. That's really neat. Um, and I think once we cover the shooter, we'll kind of look at the full cycle of that process going through because I'd love to see how power cells are actually uh, going straight through on that. So uh, we're going to go back over to Courtney, who's going to be speaking more about the shooter, uh, what you have for, of course, your flywheel, your turret, uh, and more. So tell me more about that, Courtney, and any changes you may have made from the 2020 season. Yeah, so um, our shooter is uh, right here. It's actually mounted on a full turret that spins a little bit more than 270 degrees um, from this position all the way around to facing back over the front of the robot, um, which has been really great for us because that uh, ability paired with our limelight um, allows us to be um, completely automatically target tracking. So we use the reflective tape around the target to automatically zero in on where we need to be aimed so that we were actually one of the most accurate um, shooting robots at uh, Miami Valley Regional. Um, uh, and then that paired with this custom flywheel, um, we actually uh, you, uh, cut out the aluminum ourselves and then poured this ourselves using a custom mix of uh, different durometers of rubber and then as well as our customary team colors, uh, blue and purple. Um, and so this flywheel has been great because it weighs almost four pounds, which means that um, using a PID function in the code, we can get it up to speed quickly. And then because it weighs so much, it has so much momentum that as we're shooting multiple balls in a row, it doesn't drop down its speed um, so that we can be as accurate as possible with our placement of the balls. What what motor do you have hooked up to that? And do you know uh, like what gear ratio you're using or anything? Because it looks like just one, um, which is kind of, to me, kind of crazy for a four-pound flywheel. We actually have two, one up here on the top that's more visible, and then one down here that's below it, not okay. as visible. Um I don't know the gear ratio. So uh, looking at the uh, shooter itself, uh, uh, Talk to me a little about that rubber material you poured. I'm more actually interested in kind of that checkered pattern that you have where uh, some of it is uh, recessed more than the other because a lot of the flywheels we've seen uh, tend to be a consistent surface and not have that. Have you noticed any differences in how that actually grips the balls or actually how it uh, ends up going through your shooter? Um, yeah, so actually uh, we went through a couple of different iterations of this wheel. Um, the original design did have that flat surface like you had said that most of the teams mentioned. Um, but because of the durometer of rubber that we were using um, and the way that we had 3D printed our molds because we 3D printed the mold to get the um, shape that we wanted since it's entirely custom, um, we actually found that it didn't have the right grip that we were looking for. It didn't um, shoot the balls as consistently or actually as um, quickly or powerfully as we wanted them to. Um, so we switched to this wheel design after experimenting in the 2020 season with um, some um, just uh, generic off the shelf wheels, um, which obviously weren't as efficient because they weren't as heavy. Um, but we didn't have time to fully, um, redo this wheel, um, in time for our competition. Um, but once we had some success with those wheels that had this type of tread pattern, 
we 3D printed a new mold that would give us this tread pattern for our uh, custom flywheel. Um, and we've been able to have great efficacy and consistency when we've been shooting with this tread pattern. Uh, what, a, what a smooth and efficient process uh, your team has. I love it. Uh, this is such a cool robot. Uh, Drew, we're going to be wrapping up on this robot here. And I think one of the things that really stands out to me and hopefully the first community is just the amazing aesthetics that are on this robot. Uh, you know, coming in from the, the intake with the multiple different colored wheels uh, to the different plates you have color, which I, I'd love to hear more about that. And, and even to the LEDs, uh, this is definitely one of the coolest looking robots I've seen uh, in a long time. So tell us a bit more about it and why aesthetics are important to your team. Yes, uh, thank you. Um, so, yeah, we actually, uh, with all of these accents, we tried something new with uh, hydro dipping, which uh, was something we experimented with a little bit over the summer and then kind of, as you can see, went all in on with our accents this year. Um, but between uh, the accents and hydro dip, the mechanum wheels, our little pool noodle, um, and the custom flywheel that you saw earlier, um, you can definitely tell that we are committed to our color scheme. Um, that is just it's our team says uh, rule number one is aesthetics which is, i hope is evident to anybody that sees the robot um another cool thing about our robot's design is uh the leds in our wheel wells uh it's if you notice it's not actually an even pattern there's a binary message in it that has all of our team members names just because we thought that would be a cool little addition <laughs> that is really cool yeah that's um, something, something just for you guys, though, right? So though, I can yeah. imagine speaking to a judge, uh, you'll probably get that one judge who actually understands that because I sure as heck don't. Can you just talk a little bit more about hydro dipping? Because that's something that uh, we've been starting to hear teams talk more and more about instead of, you know, a standard anodizing or powder coating or something like that. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that process? Yes. Okay. So as I said, we started with that uh, experimenting with it over the summer. Basically, the uh, process is you get a tub of hot water and you just kind of layer spray paint over the top and you dip your piece in um, with ours we would put a zip tie or a string through the little screw holes and the rivet holes on here so that we were able to cover the entire surface um, so you dip that through the water and then kind of just brush away the excess to make sure you don't get any uh, clumps of paint on it and you get some amazing products like this and like you can see every piece is unique just because of how the paint ends up yeah, uh, it's that, definitely that is, something we would recommend. It to that us. is definitely awesome. Yeah, totally would recommend for I love just, you're right, how every single piece comes out unique. That is so neat. Well, 1038 Lakota Robotics, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to speak with us uh, about your robot and the modifications you made for uh, the 2021 season. Uh, good luck with your uh, submissions. I can't wait to see this robot in the future, uh, hopefully at some sort of off season competition. But if not, I uh, can't wait to see what robots you produce in future years. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thanks for having us. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUND by joining FUND Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And first updates now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.